let me just try to address this. Uh, I've given a lot of talks about this issue, the cycle of sin. And the cycle of even good people, you know, they're praying, they're reciting Quran, they're even doing Umrah, Ibadat. But at the same time, they can't get away from certain evil practices in their alone time. There are two parts of this problem. One of those parts is spiritual and the other part is psychological. And we have to address both of those parts. Let me start with the psychological only because most of the time when we have these discussions, we don't address the psychological side, we only address the spiritual side. So I'll, I'll try to address the psychological side of this a little bit. You have to understand that there are in psychology, there are triggers. In other words, there are certain situations that make your mind, they certain, release certain chemicals in your brain and you, they make you want to do some things in certain settings. They are triggers. So for example, for a young man, I'll give a crude example. A young man is watching an action movie and he's watching the movie and he sees a beautiful woman. And as soon as he sees that one scene, his mind gets triggered. And, and he, he pauses the movie and watches something far worse. And he gets into the habit of doing that. It wasn't the movie itself. It was just that one thing that triggered it. Or for some people, when they go back into their apartment or in their room, when they're alone by themselves, bad things happen. When they're by themselves. And when they're at the masjid, obviously it doesn't happen. When they're with their friends, it doesn't happen. When they're on their own, it happens. So the first bit of advice for everyone here and myself is you have to identify when does the sin happen when I'm by myself? Where am I when it happens? What times does it happen? And if you can identify the problem times and the problem places and the problem situations, you have to try to change those situations. If you're a young man and you have a problem with, you know, the kinds of things that are available on the internet and you're looking at those kinds of things, for example, put your laptop, put your mobile device, put it in the kitchen. So that your mother's walking by, your dad's walking by and the mobile device, don't put it in your room. And parents put that stuff in a visible place in the house. These screens are destroying our kids. Seriously. Then the other thing, the spiritual side of this problem. It is normal for a human being to make tawbah to Allah and then go back and do the sin again because we are khatta'oon. The Rasul of Allah Sallallahu described us not as khati'oon but khatta'oon. Kullu bani adam khatta'oon. And khatta is a sigatul mubalagha. It's called a, the hyperbolized state. What that means in simple English is the one who repeats mistakes over and over and over again. Like a khabbaz makes bread over and over again. You know, a khatta makes mistakes over and over again. So that will happen. It's inevitable that some sin will occur over and over again. However, 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 if in the back of your mind, the moment you made tawbah, you are already thinking about three weeks from now, I'm going to be doing this again anyway. If you're thinking that in the back of your head, then لَيْسَتِ التَّوْبَ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السَّيِّئَاتِ Tawbah is not for people who continually do evil deeds. They've already accepted it. Allah says, وَلَمْ يُصِرُّوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا They don't insist on what they did. In other words, you have to make a serious, verbalized, conscious commitment. This has to stop. Not that one time you cry and you, you turn to Allah, I'm so sorry, I can't believe I did this. And you don't do it, you know. You, you have to figure out a way to get away from this entirely, a serious commitment to yourself. And if you can't do it on your own, seek the help of friends. Seek the help of people you trust. I know it's embarrassing sometimes, but we all need counsel and help sometimes. And when you realize that it's been going on for years, and you haven't been able to get out of it, it is time to seek someone else's help. Which is why in the Ummah today, psychological and spiritual counseling is so important. So many young people are in need of counseling and families are in need of counseling. That is one of the greatest priorities of this Ummah because that will be a vehicle by which peace will be delivered to people.